This is episode 29 of the Rise Up Podcast. We're a morning radio show hosted by Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life, a network of stations across New York and Pennsylvania. Our podcast is a weekly conversation that will help you think and grow in your faith. If you haven't already, subscribe today so you don't miss a single episode and find out more about our show at familylife.org. Feel free to stick around a while. We love it when you're here. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. Do we have to do this now? I don't want to do this. Get it over with, I guess. Ugh. Okay. Wow. Yeah. What, you people. Today's Rise Up podcast. Uh-huh. Are you always in a good mood? Why, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's a question we get a lot, isn't it? It's true. It's yeah. funny because uh, I'm newer to being on a morning show. It's no news for both of you, though. And I was asked this question recently. And I thought, I've asked that question a lot, too, before I had this job is, do you guys always wake up in a good mood? I mean, it seems like you guys are always happy every day you're on the radio. Are you always in a good mood? I thought, wow, that's a really interesting question. And I had a way I answered that. But I'm just wondering if you've been asked that before and how have you gone about that? I, okay, let me go first on this one, Therese. And I will I will say, generally, uh, in my life, I'm in a pretty good mood. I'm, I'm one of these glass half full. I'm, you know, generally and, and that kind of thing. I will admit that there are times, and I'm not saying this just because you guys are here, there are times when I wake up in the morning and go like, ah, okay, well, and I'm not feeling great for whatever reason, mm-hmm. it could be anything. And I walk in the door here, and even before we go on the air, we'll start chatting or whatever, and I find myself just being around you guys or just being, I, I find myself in a better mood, Aww. even if I don't start in a, now generally I am in a good mood, but I think it helps being around other people who are who are up. And again, I that's my take on it. I'm generally mm. in a good mood. If I'm not, I find myself to be in a good mood by 6 a.m. when the show starts. Oh, I love okay. that. Okay, I, I can see that. But here's another question. Mm-hmm. Would you say to somebody who performs in Shakespearean theater, do you always talk with an old English accent? <laughs> There's also that's, something no, to yeah. the fact that this yeah. is a little bit of a performance. Mm-hmm. You know, people say, use your radio voice. There is a little bit of a different voice that you mm. use. Sure. You know, when I go to the grocery store, I don't go, did my credit card swipe okay? No, that's like <laughs> something that we say for, for the radio. So there is something about when the microphone opens, we are tasked with a, a job of performing. And mm-hmm. wouldn't it be miserable for you to turn on Family Life, a place that you come to for hope and encouragement, and hear one of us going, man, today is a really crummy day. Let me tell you about all the bad things that happened to me today. That's you know, and sometimes point. we'll talk about the bad things that happen and we try to poke fun at them or like look on the bright side kind of thing. But that is also a part of it is that what we do is is a performance. I think there's a difference between that and being fake. Like somebody could say, oh, well, then you're just being fake. Then mm-hmm. it's, well, no, we'd be being fake if you were being cheerful about something that wasn't worth being cheerful about. That would be fake. I think that there's something really different when you actually are. You're, you're talking about good things. Like it's not too hard to make yourself see, oh, well, actually there is a lot of good to this stuff here. And then the other thing I think is how it's kind of like, in a sense, it's like the Christian life whether you're on the radio or not, whether you're talking in front of people or not, do we always, does, is it always encouraging to be giving everybody else the airing out of the dirty laundry? Like there's a time and a place for that with people who you're close enough to, but like in general, is it uplifting to other people if they say, how are you doing today? And um, of course we want to be vulnerable still, but if you just really unload on them, it's maybe going to be received more like, oh, wow, well, Thanks for the wet blanket. Now now I got that to start my day with. I mean, there's something about just being optimistic, not mm. fake, not having to plaster it on in our own personal lives, but like just giving grace to the circumstances and, and trying to see that glass half full when we can. I think there's virtue in doing that, whether you're on the radio or not. This might be a controversial statement. Okay, mm. let's hear it. I think fake it till you make it is biblical. Ooh. Ooh I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm the idea of transforming your mind. Hmm. Okay. How do you, how do you do that? Well, you say, okay, I'm going to go to the Bible. I'm going to, and that takes faith because now you're saying, I'm going to believe that this is true. I'm going to look at the thing that I'm thinking and I'm going to look at the truth. Now, do you immediately feel better when you take a false thought and compare it to a true thought? Of course. No, 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 you don't. (laughs) Sometimes that takes years for people to just take one 
negative or false thought and fixate on the truth that contradicts that. But the more you do that, you kind of say, okay, by by faith, I'm going to have hope <laughs> today. Mm -hmm. You know, that you fake it until it is an authentic thought, until you think, oh, yeah, I... Yeah, I, I do believe this truth from the Bible now instead of that lie. So I don't know. I think that there is something to fake it till you make it. That's not necessarily unauthentic. I think they're very yeah. different things. Yeah. And you touched on this earlier, Therese, but you, uh, you do have to know who you're speaking to in your audience. Uh, and Tim, you talked about it, too. Uh, we're talking to a radio audience. And again, you guys have said, you know, you don't want to be uh, grumpy, grumpy if you're feeling that way. But um, you may feel grumpy. It's OK to be grumpy or air your dirty laundry to your loved ones yeah, or, right. or someone. It's OK because that's what they're there for. They're there to hear that. That's one audience. You don't perhaps when your kids are little, you don't talk to them the same way you talk to your spouse or you talk to your coworkers. So I think everybody speaks differently to a different audience, but you can still mm -hmm. be authentic in all those different ways you speak to whatever audience you're speaking to. Yeah, there are things that you can do to give yourself a better mood. <laughs> I know Steve loves to hang out with me and Tim. That seems to work for him. But for other people <laughs> uh, who can't maybe do that, go outside. I find yes. that days where I sit in front of my computer a lot, I'm not feeling so great. And I kind of get lost in my own thoughts. Mm -hmm. I begin to see self-pity creep in. And when you got self-pity raining, well, you feel pretty crummy. And if you just go outside, you like you see what God has made, you see the sun, you get a little vitamin D, things start to to seem better. Things are better. Smiling. There's something about the physical act of just putting a smile on your face, right. grin and bear it, that actually re releases these chemicals from your brain that do improve your mood. And so there is something about just Grin and bear it. That actually helps. And sometimes people will say, it feels like you're smiling when you're on the radio. We are. <laughs> yeah. Because when really you are smiling and you're talking, it actually sounds like you're smiling. And then, you know, you probably have heard the fast food slogan, good mood food. Yes. When you eat good, healthy things that God has made, it can also mm -hmm. help to give you a better mood. And so if you're feeling a little, bleh, maybe think, oh, perhaps that giant cinnamon roll followed by <laughs> that <laughs> full sugar soda was not the that, best choice. That wasn't good mood food. The day, right. And that'll put you in, that's bad mood food. And so there are things that you can do. And I think that those are still you know, related to living a godly life in that God has made us. God has made food. God made the sun. And we have all those resources to help us yeah. feel like we're in a good mood. And so much of this stuff is, like you already said, doing things when we don't feel like them, doing them when we don't feel them. That's an act of faith to step out and say, OK, I'm going to I'm going to trust that life is good, even though it doesn't feel right. Good right now. I'm going to trust that, yes, the sun is shining and someday I will feel its warmth on my skin, even if I don't right now. And it takes me back to Psalm 42, where it's got that refrain that says, it's talking to yourself here. Why am I downcast? Why are you downcast, O oh my soul? And why are you at turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my Savior and my God. Like, he's not praising God when he says that. He says, I will praise God from my heart mm. again. I'm not in that place yet, but I know I will be because I know who I am. I know what's true of me in my salvation. I can hope in that even though I don't feel that right now. That's talking to yourself Instead of listening to yourself, don't listen to the grumbling thoughts. Talk to yourself. Maybe it is kind of like that, faking it till you make it. You don't feel it, but you're going to repeat it until you know it's true, until you eventually feel that it's true, too. I love the nature versus nurture uh, conversation, especially when it comes to this. Yeah. Uh, I've always been this way, or I'll always be this way, or that's the way God made me kind of thing. I have that nah. blessing and curse of... Because people who have known me, my closest, closest friends who have known me all my life, and again, I didn't come till Jesus till I was in my early 30s, they say, you're still the same guy you, know, you as far as mm. mood and that kind of mm. thing and always being up and, and that kind of thing. Now, that gets me in trouble sometimes because I can take the tragic, the most tragic situations and 
my family background and my family go to is humor. Hmm. Uh, you may not have noticed that, <laughs> but uh, but anyway, I'll make a joke in what I have to. I have to watch my audience because hmm. I'll make a joke in a tragic situation, which will be funny to some people because they know me. But if they don't know me, that can be a bad thing. So I, God just made me in a way that I'll look at anything and I'll try to find the funny in whatever it is. So I think that helps me. So I'm thankful to God that he made me that way. I didn't have to try. Yeah. I'm just always looking at things in a, in a weird, funny way, no matter what the situation is. So uh, that helps me, at least on the radio. It hurts me sometimes if I'm in the wrong audience and don't say the right thing. By the way, do we still have to keep doing this thing? Yeah. Yes. This is a, yes. This is an, yes. Oh, we're almost I, done. I, oh, we're almost done. Oh, hey. Uh -oh. Stop. We're giving out smiles that you can wear all day. This is Rise Up on Family Life. All right. This might be difficult, Therese, but uh, just uh, try to do I'm going to ask you a question about yourself, your Okay. Your person. Do you feel, because I know about one of these is correct, but anyway, um, do you feel you have unyielding courage in the face of hardship or danger? I mean, do you feel that about yourself? Uh, courage oh, in the face of hardship or danger? Unyielding courage? Well, I mean, do you, you know, do you hang that's, in there? I mean, tall order. I try to hang in there. Right. Okay. Right. In, in case, if you do, and if you fall into that category, if you're listening, you have grit. That's the grit. definition of grit. Oh. I know you're hardworking, and, and this is... Hardworking and grit. They found something very common among people. Uh, they are more, they ha they are just harder workers and they mm -hmm. display more grit. I'll ask you the next question because this is what matched up in a survey of like 10,000 people. So 10, they did a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. Which sports did you play in high school? Which Baton twirling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, I'd say, I'd say football, basketball, ba Don't baseball. Don't try to tell me it's not a sport, by the way. By the way, it is a sport. You are hardworking and you have grit if you played those high school sports. Here's that baton right now. There we go. Thanks for making us part of your morning routine. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. International Truck Day. We want to salute the truck drivers and uh, we everywhere. And we just mm -hmm. uh, want to thank. We also, on this fun Friday, want to ask a favor of oh, our boy. truck drivers as we salute. Uh, what's your name? Where do you live? Uh, my name is Jason. I live in Lewis Run. Well, are, are you going to run today? Where's your run today? <laughs> I got a couple today, but my first one's uh, going up to Buffalo. Cool. We we really do appreciate sincerely mm -hmm. what you do. Yes. We know uh, sometimes we don't realize it, but we can't do anything without you guys taking things, uh, guys and girls taking things from one place to another. Now, is it safe <laughs> to do us a favor? Yes, <laughs> yes I can. Let her rip. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> Some oh, very this... unhappy people right oh, now. Oh, I'm not one of them, though. I am happy, man. I got a smile on my face. Exactly. It's a fun Friday. Thanks for uh, thanks for what you do, and thanks for putting a smile on our face. Thanks, Jason. No problem. Thank you very much. God bless. We weren't sure how you liked your coffee, so we didn't make any. Hope that's okay. It's Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. I'm ready to unwrap a gift. Isn't unwrapping a gift fun? Okay, now, sure. Th that's what our Bible teachers do. Every oh, yeah. Single, they they sure. give the Word of yes. God. They, uh, you know, Ron and and David and Greg. Well, You're like I mean, best friends with them. First name I mean, basis. Okay, okay. Say Ron. <laughs> we say Ron Hutchcraft. We say right. David Jeremiah. We say Pastor Greg, David. Pastor Jeremiah. Pastor Jeremiah. Pastor Jeremiah. Yeah, buddy. Greg Laurie. You know, we say both names first right. and last. Right. Now, I think it's only fair, and they're great Bible teachers. It's only fair. Now, we sometimes don't have the time, so we just say Steve, Therese, and Tim. Oh, Now, we don't right. say our last name. Smith is an easy name to remember. Steve Smith, that's easy. Therese Main, like Main oh, Street, yeah. you know, that's kind of what. But we needed to come up with a way. Oh, boy. Uh, this is unwrapping the gift. We needed to come up with a way for Tim's last name. <laughs> what? Uh, maybe you don't hear it a lot. But, that's uh, true. Your name is there you go. That's what we're going to do. So, yeah, oh, it's Steve it. Smith, Streets Maine, and Tim. Your name is <laughs> On Family Life. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? I love it. Yeah. I think we're good. probably not going to do that every single time. <laughs> Can we go? Today is going to be great. We just know it. This is Rise Up with Steve, Therese, and Tim on Family Life. So what is your favorite thing about work? A good question to ask as we start a new week, right? Mm. Your second favorite thing. Go ahead. Your, 
What do you mean my second favorite? Well, I know your favorite. Go ahead. <laughs> well, if you say something like, like the paycheck, that's a problem. Oh. It might be time to make some new friends. People who have their best friend at their job tend to engage more in their work. Mm. And when friends kind of work together, they actually are more apt to get promoted and to make more money. And so, yeah, your yeah. friends at work could be the key to a well, yeah. bigger direct deposit. Yeah. So friends yeah. at work. Hmm. I got to get me some of those. But for now, I guess Man. the two of you will be, be nice. okay. <laughs> May the blessings of the Lord be with you in all that you do today. This is Rise Up on Family Life.